Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. Today is day 28 of Hidden Figures, making this our very last Hidden Figure for Black History Month and daily videos. Thank you so much for everybody that watched and left, com read, uh, left comments, excuse me, and sort of spread the videos around. I really appreciate it. Today's Hidden Figure is Ginger Smock who was a jazz violinist and one of the first women to record jazz improvisations on the violin. She was also one of the first female Black American band leaders on television. Emma Ginger Smock, so Ginger was a nickname, was born in Chicago on June 4th, 1920. After her parents' untimely death left her orphaned at age six, Smock moved to Los Angeles, where she was raised by her aunt and uncle in the historically Black Central Avenue community. She displayed precocious musical talent, and when her aunt and uncle realized she was a child prodigy, they bought her a violin and arranged for her to receive private music lessons. As a child, Smock was a fan of big band sounds, and in her words, liked to sit by the phonograph and improvise to artists like Benny Goodman and Duke Ellington. Smock studied classical violin privately under Bessie Dones and performed at the Hollywood Bowl to a standing ovation at age 10. In 1931, she had her first solo recital at Los Angeles' first AME church, and at Jefferson High School, she joined the orchestra and the marching band and played with two youth ensembles, the All City Student Symphony and the Los Angeles Junior Philharmonic, of which she was the only Black American member. She went on to study at the Zollner Conservatory of Music. Classical music was not considered a viable career for Black women, so Smock took a, took a job excuse me, at a lithography shop and performed as a hobby at church and community functions. She would later join the Southeast Symphony, a primarily Black American orchestra, and spent the early 1940s performing light concert music before becoming a protege of veteran jazz violinist Stuff Smith in 1943. Smock had a horn-like approach to violin with aggressive riffs and improvisations that Smith encouraged. He arranged for her to substitute for him at a local California jazz club, which would be her first professional job as a jazz musician. By the time she was 23, Smock was playing jazz around Southern California with an all-female trio called the Sepia Tones, and her aggressive improvisational approach to the violin would be extremely influential on the violin music of the time period. Throughout the 1940s, she put together her own band, Ginger and Her Magic Notes, and headlined at the Waikiki Inn, becoming popular in San Francisco clubs and known as the First Lady of the Violin. She recorded on Leonard Feather's Girl in Jazz, excuse me, Girls in Jazz album and hosted a radio show, Melody Parade. In 1951, she made the leap to television as band leader for a CBS production, The Chicks and the Fiddle, making her one of the first female Black American band leaders on television. She also performed and composed music for the public television variety show, Dixie Showboat, on KTLA. Smock can be heard on the 1946 recording by the Vivian Gary Quartet called A Woman's Place is in the Groove. In 1953, she recorded an original composition, Strange Blues, which is one of her few commercial recordings. From 1953 to 1955, Smock toured nationally with an R&B group called Steve Gibson and the Redcaps. She also toured the West Coast with the Jackson Brothers Orchestra before returning to L.A. to headline at local clubs. She worked as MC and band leader for the television show Rhythm Review from 1958 to 1959, and in the early 60s became the first woman musical director for a summertime cruise ship called the SS Catalina. She released her only full-length album after, an LP titled On the SS Catalina with the Shipmates and Ginger. Even after retiring from being a career musician, Smock continued to perform in her central album Avenue neighborhood, especially at church events. To me, that's a great portion of my life, just playing for church, she said. It's my way of saying, thank you, God, for giving me a gift. In 1968, the People's Independent Church, which was her childhood church, awarded her a certificate in recognition of 30 plus years of musical service. She died in 1995 at the age of 75. A violin owned by Smock is in the collection of the National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C., and Kelly Hall Tompkins, a contemporary Black American woman violinist, has stated, 
Ginger Smock is but one example of how history can absorb or overlook the achievements of African Americans and women. Smock should factor into the conversation when we talk about musical history in the United States, jazz history, and classical history. And that's Ginger Smock, a hidden figure. I thought that'd be a really nice quote to close out on. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed daily videos for February. Uh, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this year's daily videos, hidden figures. We I have over 175 hidden figures, which I'm so excited about. Um, I previously used to do hidden figures every other Wednesday, so I might try to incorporate some more Wednesday hidden figures. The videos are just really hard and time consuming to do. So, uh, I'm not making any promises, but I might start reincorporating that uh, back. So hopefully you guys had a great February, a great Black History Month. We are about to be in March, so officially sort of in spring and kind of shifting gears uh, with this year, 2021. There will be links and information on Ginger Smock in the description box, of course. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Food for thought as always. See you guys next time. Peace.